Hello everybody, welcome to the second part of our Shawnee Momentum Oscillator tutorial video. In the last video I was just telling you guys about the Shawnee Momentum Oscillator, showing you an example. And in this video let's actually get to programming it within Python. This video is going to assume you have the sample data for this entire series. If you don't, there is a link to it in the description. Just visit that uh, link in there, get that sample data, copy and paste it into like a notepad file and save it in the same directory as the script. Also, the first uh, like one, two, three, four, five, nine, like nine or ten lines of code you can copy and paste each part of this uh, video series here. So the calculation every time starts with the following lines. So if you have it, go ahead and copy and paste yours in. Otherwise, follow me. So first we're going to want to import NumPy as MP. Then we want to import time. Now we want to specify our sample data. So we're going to say sample data equals open. And what we want to open is that text file that I just told you guys to save if you haven't. That's going to be sample data.txt with the intention to read it. Then we're going to go ahead and have it read it into memory. Then split data is going to be sample data.split. Uh, and that's going to be a split by a new line. Then we're going to have date close p high p low p open p and volume equal to np.load text and what we want to go ahead and load is split data the delimiter for that split data is going to be a comma since they're comma separated and unpack equals true so we can unpack it into these variables now we're going to go ahead and define CMO and the parameters that we want to pass through CMO are the prices that we want to use and the time frame that we want to use. Don't forget your call or your uh, colon. And let's go ahead and make some space. <clears throat> so now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and you know this function is going to return an array, and we're, that array it's going to return a CMO, only it'll be populated. Right now it is not. Then we're going to say x equals time frame, whatever that time frame is. And then while x is uh, less than the length of date, or probably better would be prices, actually. So this is not dependent on that original uh, thing. So while x is less than the length of prices, um, we're going to say consideration prices equals prices. And then it's going to be x minus tf all the way to x. So basically, uh, as we as I said in the beginning, uh, each that you're considering all the up moves for a time frame and all the down moves for a time frame. So right now we're just defining that time frame. So all the prices that we're going to consider, basically, uh, hence the name consideration prices. Now we're going to say up sum equals zero, and then down sum equals zero. <clears throat> so each time this while loop runs, it's going to reset these to zero. And then what we're going to go ahead and say is y equals 1. Since we have to start at the first part, or like the number 1 in the element, right? So I, sometimes I call that the firsteth element, since it's not really the first element, since the first element would be the zeroth element. But anyway, uh, so the firsteth element, well, we have to start there because we want to know whether or not that's a up move or a down move. So at the zeroth element, you can't make that call, right? So wow, y is less than the tf, whatever that is. Uh, cur price <clears throat> equals, and it's going to be equals consideration prices, and then the y element, right? And then, oops, uh, pre price, previous price equals consideration prices y minus one. Then we're going to go ahead and say, and I, let me make some more space, or I guess I already had some space. So. Um, if current price uh, is greater than and I'm going to go ahead and throw an equal sign in here just to be totally safe. So either this one or the other one needs to have a greater than or equal to, right? So either it's a move up or it's a move down, but we there's really no handling here for like if there's no move. So that's my handling for if there is no move. The formula doesn't inherently have any handling for that since that's probably a really rare occasion. So um, current price, previous price, um, so if it's greater than or equal to the previous price, then we'd add something to upsum, right? So we add to upsum, 
uh, plus equals the whatever the current price minus the prev price is. So if this is greater than this, then what is the difference? And we just add that. Else, we don't really need to define anything for else because if it's not greater than or equal to, then it must be less than. So then we're just going to say down sum plus equals, and this time the prev price must be higher. Uh, so minus the cur price, and that'll give us also a positive number. And then at the end of this, we just do y plus equals 1. So it's going to run through all of the prices and do that. Now, when that's done, the cur CMO, and this is where we actually do the equation uh, that we saw before. So let me bring up that uh, thing. This is it. Yes. So now we actually want to use these numbers. So the sum of the ups minus the sum of the downs divided by the sum of the ups plus the sum of the downs times 100. So now that we want to do that, the cur SMO is going to equal up sum minus down sum divided by up sum um, plus down sum. And since we're doing division here, we can either from future import division, or we could just go ahead and convert one of these numbers to a float so it just, uh, so, so the division will always work in the way that we want it to. <clears throat> then we want to multiply this entire fraction, right? Uh, so this should close the entire thing, right? Yes. Times 100.00, let's say. So that gives us the current CMO price. We're still in this grand while loop here, right? So we have current CMO, and then we'll come down here. We'll say CMO dot append cur CMO. Then we'll call x plus equals one since that responds here. So we can actually exhaust that while loop. Then finally, when that while loop is exhausted, we'll return date, and date will always start at whatever that time frame is and then CMO. <clears throat> so these will be of equal length to each other. Then finally we would do CMO uh, close P10 um, and we can say, let's just say like X1 equals CMO close P10 print uh, let's just print Y since we don't really care about the date. Uh, so we'll save that, we'll run that. Hopefully we don't have any uh, let's see, close, uh, can't capitalize that P, lowercase P. Run it again, priv price, somewhere I typed priv, here it is, should be priv price, let's try again, all right, <laughs> now we actually have um, our CMO, right, and how do we know that, how do we, how are we confident that we actually have it, all of these numbers are in the range of either negative 100 to a positive 100, so that's how we know. <laughs> Uh, that we did what we wanted. So now let's go ahead and in the next video what we're going to do is just go ahead and put this into matplotlib and also in that video I'll show you guys how we can uh, do the SMA line as well. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching.